Yes, off the track brought to you by Windsor Park Stud. International lineup of stallions they have, including the son of Galileo, of course, Rip Van Winkle. Well, our guest today is Lisa Latter, and we've just talked about uh, Faraty Princess, uh, your first Group 1 winner. Significant time in your life because you were expecting your first child. Yeah, I was pre uh, six months pregnant when she won, so it was a big thrill. Um, also a thrill for Bruce as well, because the year before, he was down to ride Bramble Rose, got hurt, couldn't ride her, and she, of course, went on and won the Oak. So some retribution there for, for Bruce as well. Yeah, definitely. It was a race he'd always wanted to win, so it was, you know. Hey, um, Josh, your first child? Yes. Yeah. Certainly born to be involved in the industry. Has he got an interest himself? Yes, well, I, you had John Street on a yeah. while ago, and um, you know we flip, we um, said to him, he he gets the catalogues, the race catalogues, and he, he'll be the first to open them. Is that right? And he'll start circling Sales what he likes yeah. and yeah. all the rest. And can I come to the premier sale? Can I come to the select sale? We need that next generation coming <laughs> through. We're going to talk more about Josh a bit later on. I want to talk about a horse though that I didn't realise was probably as good, and I probably underestimate the horse. I know he won a Group One. Uh, a horse called Mickey Street. Uh, special horse because it was raced by long-term client John Street. Yeah, at Lincoln Farms, yeah it was. Um, he and Graham Blackburn? Yes, together. yeah, no, it was. And Mickey Street, a horse that, uh, did you buy or did John buy for 60000 Um I bought him, yep. Picked him out? Yes, um, Kim Clapperton actually spotted him. She said to me, um, I've seen a lovely horse, you know, go, go round and get him out. And so we did, we went round and just loved him. He, you know, he, he was one of those horses, pitch black, you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, they always do stand out a yeah, bit. You always pay a little bit extra for those. Yeah, ones, you, you do, but um, yeah. It's a sign of John, uh, in terms of Mickey, the name came from his brother's dog, dog. Fox Terrier, yes. which had passed away and yeah. died. Yes, it was. His name was Mickey, and he decided to try and, as a Philip to his brother and, and, bro and sister-in-law, give them a share in the horse. Yeah. And hence the name was Mickey Street. Yeah, no, that's, that's John. I mean, he's so kind-hearted like that. And, um, and he, uh, the horse, did he show you everything early on, or was he a horse that just took a while to come to it? It was quite funny. I, you know, we give him, I think, four or five trials before his first start, and um, he showed nothing. And I said to Bruce, oh, I'm getting worried about this horse, yeah. you know. He couldn't even run on the first three. And then um, we put the hood on him and he just grew another gear. It, it, the hood you're doing at the blinkers? Yes. So what, what is it that did, just the concentration levels? Was he walk, watching other horses or he just wasn't focused? Yeah, yeah, I think it must have been that. You know, he was a little bit timid um, and once we put the hood on, he just um, was away. He certainly went away, uh, went right through the grades, as we know. Uh, he was also a horse, though, that was destined perhaps to there and, and not done it, because I read Bruce said that the, the Cal Capital Stakes, he should have won. Yeah, he was extremely unlucky that day. I mean, that is, you know, that, that's racing, as they put mm -hmm. it, and um, nothing opened up for him, and um, Bruce was really gutted with himself afterwards, but I don't think when you watch the replay there was anything different he could have done. Yeah, it was one of the worst days that he said in his riding career was getting beat on that horse. But some satisfaction. You went to Ellerslie on Boxing Day. Yeah, and he won. He won well and he deserved it. Here he is, out wide. Um, again, he's, I read somewhere where he again hit the front a bit earlier than what he wanted to. Yeah, he did. I mean, he just got such a good run into the race. and um, Followed Hurrah, which was the horse in the sergeant colours. Yep. Or was that Shavasti? I'm just trying to think. Shavasti, yeah, was it? Shavasti. Yeah. And that's, yeah, her are coming now. George refers to it as an upset, but uh, you didn't think it was an upset. You were pretty confident coming in. Yeah, no, we were. And, um, yeah, like I said, if you'd seen his um, count run, you would definitely have thought he was a, was a chance. Right-handed, hadn't had too many runs right-handed, I suppose. No, I think that may have been his first first one, um, but um, he did, yeah. And big thrill, for my first group winner up north, and yeah. yeah. That's another step you're taking in your career. Uh, a horse called Nanjara, special place for you? Yeah, n no, definitely she she was um, good, bought her at the sales, and um, good, good group of owners that um, owned her. Um, she was known as Star around the stable. Was that because of potentially how good she was going to be, or 
Who named her? Was it Josh that named her? Uh, no, she had a um, white star on her forehead. So, OK, so uh, yeah. a very simplication yeah, from there. Yeah, I think um, Dean Smith actually might have named her because he broke her in. And, done and he her. retained part of the ownership? Yes, he did, um, with, with um, I think, um, um, the Beechins from Hawke's Bay, who are very good friends, um, Elizabeth and Buddy of his. Given your history with your father with breaking in, etc., did you, did you initially do a lot of the breaking in yourself? or? Yes, we did. We, we broke in them all. I mean, it's quite funny when you start out, you know, you do. You you know, I love breaking them in. I st still wish I could now, you know, you definitely get a better line on um, okay. how early they're going to go and things like that and where you're at. But, yeah, because um, yeah, that's always got me with breakers. They, they, they tend to have an ability to assess the horse. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know how you can do that. I mean, right, basically, obviously, there's a feel that they give you that they can do, or the movement of the horse that they can obviously tell how good they're going to be potentially. Yeah, no, I think that's a very fair comment. And um, yeah, but unfortunately, the bigger you get, yeah. you know, you just haven't got time for it. Um, he won, or she won, should I say, the Manawatu Cup in, in 07. Yes. And uh, you, you must have had another child by the stage, Jamie. Yeah, no, I did. Yeah, had, had Jamie by then. So you got two children, but you had uh, young Josh was at the uh, races this day. He's just three years old. It was his favourite horse, and um, he was there to help lead her back to scale after she won. And um, you know, I think he th he thought I think it was even quoted in the paper. He thought she'd won the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. <laughs> well, and did you give some thought to going to the? to the first Tuesday in November? Um, I mean, you live the dream, don't you? But, um, yeah, no, she, she had a couple of problems and she was never probably going to get quite that far. In terms of training, it's interesting we bring up about the first Tuesday. Is that one race that's on your bucket list that you'd love to win? Oh, definitely. I mean, wouldn't you? Even mm. to have a runner in it. That's the key, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's it. And I read somewhere else too, the Derby, the New Zealand Derby, clearly. Yeah, would love to win the New Zealand Derby. The other two? Cox plate, I suppose. Yeah, you start, yeah, you start yeah, ticking them yeah, off, yeah, don't you? Go through. Uh, the Manor with Two Cup became yours, though. You won it the following year with John Bellina? Yes, yeah. No, he was a horse that we bought at the Ready to Run sales, and Ray and Judy Stevens owned him and, and live in Palmerston North, and they've still got a horse with me now, too. So Everything's going pretty well. Uh, October 2008, uh, your partner Bruce, who's riding well, ridden a thousand winners, everything goes well. Urine sample, gets Opie to put his urine sample as a result. Bang. What did you say? I'd love to know what you said to him when you found out what he did. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't be words for on the TV anyway. <laughs> but um, behind every negative, there e becomes a positive. Exactly. And you know, can I just say that? And, that's, and I'm glad we brought that up because he got put out for 15 months. Um, I reckon, personally for him, he didn't have to worry about wasting. He would have changed personally. His whole demeanour, his whole approach to life would have changed. Yeah, no, it definitely did. Um, yeah, he could eat, I mean, like a normal person and mm. do what a normal person He'd be a lot happier. Did. Yes, yeah. And I, ironically, I mean, what else did he have to achieve? He'd win the Group 1 races, he'd ridden a 1,000 winners. It was The other thing for me, and this is it, I'm going I'm to read these out. You went uh, 26, 30, 39, 30 pr prior to this particular point yep. in time. Post this, 62, 58, 67, 76, 80. I think there is a correlation between Bruce being involved more directly with you, having more time to put with the stable to assist you. Yeah, I think um, that first year um, when he got put out, I think, you know, I had a lot of knockers, I had a lot of doubters. Mm. People thought I probably couldn't make it without him being there. Oh, because he wouldn't allow to actually... No, the... he no. wasn't. So um, we had a nanny at the time and... Um, Unfortunately, we had to get get rid of her. And, well, um, you say unfortunately, but then Bruce probably yes. the opportunity of spending more time with oh, Jamie he and did. Josh. And and for the kids, you know that that was brilliant. You know he, he did he done everything with them, and it really let me focus on mm. on my training. Because the other thing too, and that's what I always think about. I mean, from our point of view, Saturdays is a big day for us. And of course, Saturday's school sports yep. and things like that. So we, we, for, we give up a lot of that sort of involvement in your kids' growth and, and development. Obviously, Bruce was in a position to be able to involve, be involved. Yeah, well, Josh plays um, rugby on a Saturday morning and um, Jamie plays hockey. Um, Bruce usually helps coach the rugby, but he couldn't this year because he was in Australia. But um, yeah, no, he gets right in behind that. And... I'd, I could imagine him on the sideline barracking a bit, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, listen, there was another thing I read too. Uh, it's funny what you, you pick up Googling. 2009, March 2009, they, they got you for putting the wrong horse in a trial a couple of times. Turns out it was an elusive city as opposed to the keeper. The mix-up between you and Stephen Marsh. Oh, yeah. How did you resolve that? Oh, you, got, you, you talked about Kim Clapperton. You send the horses to Kim Clapperton. Yeah. Am I right? She sends the horse to you. It arrives. You start training it. Oh, yeah, it's going OK. Finally, wins a trial. Yeah. No, Bang. it was just one of those stories. I mean, we laugh about it. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, um, Malcolm and Barbara were very good friends with Bruce and Kay Marsh. So mm. obviously we've had an association, you know, all the way through. And Bruce and Kay actually texted me last night about what a great season I'd had. Yeah. So um, it is quite funny. Um, we blame Kim. But at the end of the day, it was probably our fault for not te um, checking the brands. The irony is Stephen owned his horse, you owned yours. Yes. So there was no clients involved. The horse arrived back. They must look similar. Look, it was quite funny because Bruce, I think Bruce didn't go to sales this year and he wanted me to buy him a horse. So, And he was on the phone all the time. Have you bought me a horse yet? Have you bought me a horse? And in, in the end I said, look, I've seen one I quite like. Yeah. You know. Elusive City. Elusive City. So I bought it and I of course just sent it to Kim's and because we owned it ourselves and I think Bruce went out on his own to Kim's to look at it so he didn't know what it yeah. looked like yeah. and then um, by the time it came into the stables it was probably nine, ten, maybe even a year later, you yeah. know. Had the right brand on the bottom, you know, like the year it was yeah, born, yeah. so it was alright. Yeah. And bay, was it a bay or what was it? Huh? Yeah, bay. bay. But when you just trial them, you don't sometimes change the ownership papers into mm. your name because you don't need to because yeah. they're there to be sold. And yeah. Yeah. And so it goes, and there was a uh, situation that the first trial, that the, the steward was caught up because there'd been an accident or something. Like that. And I, I thought it was a bit tough on them. I thought they were a bit tough on you to even find you, quite frankly. I thought, it was a genuine, I thought it was a genuine mix up. Well, it was a genuine mix up, but at the time we didn't realise what had happened. Oh, God. And of course, your horse won a trial. This is where I can't understand. Your horse wins a trial, the one that should be yours. Yeah. It's not much good, is that right? No, it had shown a fair bit, it, and it was booked to go to Singapore. So, so how did you resolve it all? Oh, look, um, it, it got a little bit heated at oh, one stage it? between okay. Stephen and I, but. Um, at the end of the day, we sat back and looked, hey, look, yeah. go, we go back too far, you yeah. know, it goes back to Bruce and Kay and Malcolm and Bart, you know, going so back too far. So we just sat down and sent both horses up to Singapore and... The rest re is history. The rest is history. Beautiful. It's, <laughs> it is great. I always wondered how it was resolved because I just couldn't see how you could resolve it because one sort of indicated it was OK and one the other. Hey, listen, Platinum's Anna. I want to bring in a man here called Neville McAllister, who hasn't been with you all the time, but he has a very close association with John Street. Oh, look, um, Neville was a wonderful supporter, you know, very loyal person and, um, you know, has, has helped me a, a lot. Um, he is regarded as a pedigree guru, is that right? That's I've been... He's passionate. Is that he right? He is absolute passionate about it, you know. He will go through the pedigrees, he gets them off Josh, obviously. Josh <laughs> has thumbed the pages through. Uh, he gets them and goes through and identifies on pedigree the horses, that, that he, he he considers yeah and that's the first premise of selection yes yep and so then, he creates a short list on yep. pedigree yeah and then you go to the sales and get round them and, and look at the physical would you buy outside of that premise the Neville McAllister or not um, well Neville wouldn't um, okay but uh, you know if you and obviously on first season size you know you've you've got to be a little you know you've got to mm. think outside the square and. Um, yeah, but Neville was, he's passionate about it, he loves it. And he went to Adelaide, bought a horse that turned out to be Platinum Zana. Yep, and um, she, she ended up winning got six or seven races mm. and black, black type, type yeah. black type. Adds to the value, etc. Yeah, definitely. Um, I did notice over the years, uh, and we talk about the sales, that you've gone from paying 24000 for Faraday, for instance, yeah. and things like that, to all of a sudden, you're paying a lot more money. You went to the sales in 2010, and yep. bought a horse by Charge Ford for 110000 Yeah, no, he, he was one that, you know, we wanted to buy an early horse for the Karaka Millions, and, um, yeah, and he was on Neville's pedigree list as well, but um, he was bought for Lincoln Farms, um, mm. yeah. His name was Fort Lincoln, um, as you say, bought to be in the Magic Millions, or Karaka Millions, yep. should I say, the Karaka Million. Um, everything just came to plan. 
Yeah, it certainly did. Um, you know, he'd gone well. He'd, you know, he'd made the field. You know, he's one of those horses that doesn't doesn't do a lot on the track. You know, he's pretty mm -hmm. laid back and all the rest of it. Um, you had two in the race too. You had Brackenwood, yes. and by as luck would have it, drawn one and two. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're able to watch, and you had the colours on your stable colours. That's interesting for me that John Street's never had his own colours. Yeah, I don't know really why he hasn't because he's got his own trotting colours, but um, mm. he's always been happy. I I suppose because Success. he had horses with yeah. Malcolm. Yeah. And this is Jonathan Riddell in the white cap. Um, this is a super ride. Oh, it was a super ride, you know, to have all those gaps open up on the inside like that. <laughs> Absolute special thrill. Um, I think, one, you bought the horse specifically to run in the race, and that was achieved. But two, for, for John Street, having lost Mickey Street, that was the other thing, of course, you lost Mickey Street as well. Yeah. To have a horse back in the line like that, with all the money that's been put into racing from John, to get that success. Yeah, no, he, uh, you know, John, we ha I've had a lot of luck for Lincoln Farms, and I mean, yeah. Has he ever thought about, I mean, does, do you do all his horses? Or has he spread, it, has he spread them yeah, around? No, no, I do do them all, yeah. You're it. Yeah, I'm, I'm it. <laughs> you are it. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Riddell, um, remarkable career, and I'd love to get him on uh, off the track because he was, as we all said, uh, a jumps rider. We kept referring to him as the former jumps rider. We never refer to that now. He, yeah. he must have put himself through hell to some extent to get down to a riding weight that could see him riding those sort of races. Oh, definitely. I mean, he does. He wastes, you know, wastes very hard, and um, he's just a fantastic horseman. Um, you know, reminds me a lot of um, Bruce, you know, they're mm. both, you know, very good horsemen and I mean, they're going to have a career in the game, whether it be being a jockey or not. Very similar, you know, like to Chris Waller, you have to, it's almost like a company, isn't it? In terms of the, the, the layers of, you've got Bruce, yourself obviously with the yeah. overseeing, you've got Jonathan Riddell, you've got Daryl Bradley, yeah. those Raiders, are integral yeah. parts of, of the team, isn't it? Yeah, well, Daryl wrote his 100th winner for me this year, and I mean, that, that is a lot of winners for one trainer. And um, Kelly, Kelly Myers is there most mornings, and mm. Robert Hannum, so yeah. Great and stuff. of course, now Bridget, you know, Bridget, you know, I've taken her on as an apprentice, and she is going very well. All right, well, the life and times of Lisa Latter will continue after this break.